Hey everyone, it's Chris Zaffoid Karabatz and this is Smart Talk Radio. Uh, today I have Lily Forrester with me, part of the Outreach Hive. She uh, works with us in Mexico with the uh, Narcoforco event down there. And we're here to talk about the uh, event I went to in New York City a week ago, uh, humbly named the Epic Blockchain Takeover event um, during the Blockchain Week there. And we're going to chat about who I met there, uh, what I said there, and what I think the uh, results of the event were. So uh, we'll go from there. Go ahead and say hi, Lily. Hi, everybody. It's good to see you. Um, my first question is, what's with the takeover thing? Was it really a takeover? Was it the conquest? Was it the Bitcoin crusade? Like, <laughs> well, It was put, put on by some people who were a bit um, tired of, it of the, the corporateness that had taken over the consensus event because that event is super duper corporate um, and wanted to get down to what uh, crypto was about in the beginning and get people involved from the ground level up. So, you know, it was a bit of a, uh, <laughs> the opposite of humble name, but I think their hearts were in the right place. So it was fun. Well, I mean, that does make sense because uh, at the end of the day, there are a lot of corporate interests just trying to get into this stuff through the money, not necessarily for what they add to the world. <laughs> yeah, and I talked to a couple people there. Um, this event was over two days at a kind of a party on the first day and then the actual talking on the second day. And at the party, I mean, I talked to people from Consensus who had wandered down. So uh, a couple guys from CME, Futures Desks, um, and they, I wouldn't call them idealistic, um, but they certainly enjoyed the lower government regulation in the crypto space and were excited to make money off of it. So, you know, but they, you know, they had the right general idea, but they were also New York bankers. Dipping their toes in a, maybe something a little bit more, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, so that's, that's the hope. And that was my hope there is to, expose these people to more than just Bitcoin and to talk about what the crypto space is really trying to do. Yeah, that point gets missed a lot, especially when things like bull markets happen and all people can see is the rising dollar signs and none of the features that make the projects work or the communities that make the projects work or anything like that. Exactly, because you know when you have the speculators taking over the actual adoption gets left by the wayside. And as I say all the time here at Smart Cash, we're trying to get the currency back in cryptocurrency. It's, it's kind of a corny saying, but that's what we're trying to do here is remember the medium of exchange part of it. I, I, I mean, it is totally true because, I mean, using Bitcoin is still kind of a nightmare most of the time. You have to wait so long just to have it confirmed and then even longer for a lot of ser services, like when you send it to exchanges and stuff, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, half the uh, support stuff we get on uh, our smart shift feature is why is this taking so long? It's like, well, your Bitcoin transaction hasn't been confirmed yet. What do you want us to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, God love when you got to compensate for Bitcoin slow stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, so what was the format of this thing? Is it like a traditional speaker style format or was it something a little more different? Uh, there was a mix there. There were some people who had their solo time up front to do the presentation and show their project. Um, but there were also panels talking about the general um, topics and such. I was supposed to be on a panel as well as have my own time up there. Um, but the time on the panel was actually taken over by people asking questions about smart cash. So it actually went about 40 minutes over time and took over the time I was supposed to be up there by myself, but it mm -hmm. worked out since it just migrated into smart cash anyway, which I thought was excellent. I mean, a lot of the time people get more out of the interactive stuff than they do out of just somebody having a speech at you anyway. So that was part of the idea in a Graforco. So <laughs> Yeah, that was that was great. I mean, I was I loved that format versus just me standing up there with a PowerPoint talking, which I've done. I just don't like that as much. I don't feel as comfortable. But when I'm up there and people are asking questions about adoption, about Brazil, about why smart cash is around, about why we're better than Bitcoin, 
it was it was very good and very natural because there was a there was a mix of people there. There were certainly some people who have been in the crypto space forever and were experts and actually asked some very good questions. Um, but there were also people there who, you know, they had money, they were business people, but they really didn't know anything about Bitcoin, much less uh, a cryptocurrency like smart cash. So it was it was a great mix of questions and a good group of the audience there, and they were. They were very thrilled by what we were doing in Mexico, very encouraged by the adoption in Mexico. Wow, in Brazil, very encouraged by the adoption <laughs> there. And we, we hope that you, yeah. Know, yeah, that you can help us in Mexico quite a bit too. I mean, it, especially like where I'm at now, there's a lot of English speakers and there's also a lot of like young entrepreneurs. So it shouldn't be necessarily hard to get people into it. It's just a matter of talking to them about it and getting them to see the value. A lot of them are already interested, though. Like, I found a lot more Mexicans know about crypto than I realized, so it's getting popular here. That's, I mean, that's excellent. That's, that's inevitable from our perspective. I just, as the fiat dollars lose value, I mean, I, my last trip to Mexico, I was surprised by how low the peso had gotten versus the U.S. dollar, just but it had been several years since I'd been there in the past, and the, the exchange rate drops quite a bit. And inflation and devaluation, people um, people are hurt by that with what they can buy. So we're hoping that crypto, even though it is a volatile now, that it can help them in the long run as more and more adoption actually stabilizes the pricing and actual usage versus speculation. And that's what we're all about at Smart Cash. Yeah, and the nice thing about Mexico and what I think makes like Mexico and Smart Cash work well for each other is Mexicans have a love for money. They have a love for making money. They have a love for moving their money around and they have a love for spending their money. And like, you know, the peso and the bank system here, like it's a little freer than the U.S., but there's still a lot of hurdles there. And it definitely doesn't go up in value. So there's that. <laughs> it's I, I remember <laughs> talking to a few business people out there who say that, you know, so many of the businesses, at least where we were in Acapulco, I'm not sure about the rest of Mexico, they, you know, they open up and they run for about nine months until they get big enough for somebody in government to notice them and come in and shut them down. And then they open up a few doors down to do the same thing all over again. Because no, that, that's totally accurate. accurate. That's a countrywide thing. That was really common. Like, I don't know, there was probably like 30 businesses that opened and closed in the neighborhood that John and I lived in for th like three years so I, and they would literally or they would open up like in a different part of the like property with like more coverage and like handwritten signs and then they just take them down and the government would come through and they call each other and stuff it was like <laughs> these well, people that's great I love it and that that's you know the government is getting in the way of business and that is one of the things we want to make easier with cryptocurrency so there's less friction in handling money. And that, that's what a lot of the people at the event were asking about is how the businesses that we have in Brazil are handling things, how the government regulation is affecting them, how they're dealing with taxes, how they're dealing with securities laws and stuff like that. Because you know, a lot of these people at this event were, as I said, more traditional business people. And you know, while one of the things I certainly encourage is move fast and break things, a lot of these people <laughs> are more, um, uh, more hesitant. They don't want to put their money where the government's going to come in and take it all. They want to put their money where somebody else has taken the hits already for the government side of things. So they were very encouraged by the adoption out there. And that I think exposed them to looking at more than just the United States for this kind of thing and seeing how businesses in Mexico, the small businesses, the people who really are hurt the most by the fees and the banking, banking overhead, and seeing how cryptocurrency can help those people, I think is, is great. And then I think I opened a couple of people's eyes there to that too. That's a, definitely what the world needs. Um, what other sort of questions did, were people asking you there? Um, it, it, there were a lot of questions about um, how things are funded. So we got to talk about the, uh, the project fund as well as the high structuring teams. And there was some discussion there on the differences between smart cash and some other projects in that area and how we're, we're structured so that the core hive teams can't touch the project fund, but the project fund can't defund the core hive teams. So they liked the stability that brings to the project where there will be funding for what the core, 
the, the hive structuring teams need to do and built in mechanisms for expanding those teams. You know, as we know, we started with three, now we have six, we have to expand to nine and 12 and more as we go on. Um, but also tools for the community to get funding to help expand and help do either development work or outreach work or whatever, because, you know, me, you know, if I were to go down to where you are in Mexico and try to convince people to use smart cash, they don't know who I am. They don't care. I don't know anything about what they're going through, but local people do know what their local communities need and they have a better idea of what they can do. And, and that's what we want with the proposal system is have people in these local areas know what their town needs, know what help they need to get the local people to accept smart cash. And that, that's what the proposal is all about is I don't know your home better than you do. So they were excited about that aspect of it. They were also excited that we do have the built in funding for the structure of the teams that allowed me to go to New York, that allow us to sponsor appropriate events, that allow us to continue development even in the bear market we're in now. Where there are a lot of pro projects out there that have a very hard time with that. Yeah, and to pay your employees because it's not, it, it's, everybody was working in crypto during the bull market and then now that the bear market's around, like it's not very easy for most people to work in crypto. No, it's not. And, you know, I'm not. And yeah, we've all had to make sacrifices during the bear market, but it's, it's about keeping the important things moving forward. And that's what this bear market has done is it's weeded out a lot of the little projects that don't have good funding, don't have good structure, don't have good, don't have a, an organized way to keep things moving on. So we've seen more and more of these things failing during the bear and hopefully now that we're back in the bowl things will get better for those who have weathered that storm i think a bear market can definitely be important for shake out of you know shit coins to say the least but like just <laughs> yeah and you know not every project out there that people are trying to get popular or that's even getting popular is actually worth a damn or useful it's one of the things where it, there needs to be differentiation between the useful and and the idealistic <laughs> yeah absolutely and that's that's what we try to focus on here is our actual use case is money and that's why we're focused on the features here like the smart card and you know i had at least two people there when i showed them a demo of the smart card say that this is you know exactly what we're looking for in the crypto space you know just like i had people down in you know mexico de acapulco thank me for finally making this, this something usable that they can show their crypto ignorant friends or their parents about this and they understand exactly what's going on yeah I've, I've had my friend uh describe it as the only crypto he knows of that he could describe to his grandma and she would understand it like and at the end of the day that's true you know like you could send your grandma you know a little crypto via email most grandmas at this point are using email like even my grandpa was using email like and <laughs> Yeah, they might send you something in all caps, but they are using email. <laughs> <laughs> or cat well, photos or some sort of virus email that they got or whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's exactly what we're trying to work with is make things as easy and painless, but still secure for these people and make it something that they can use that, you know, with, with the way we have the smart cards printing out, you know, we can, you know, give smart cards to people. They never really have to touch the computer. They can go refill it at their stores and just move on and have it be usable immediately. And that's what we're trying to do is make it as easy as possible for adoption to occur and encourage businesses to accept it and get away from fiat currency. And slow moving cryptocurrencies as well. <laughs> and life's too short. <laughs> Nobody's gonna wait for 10 minute, 10 minute confirmation at a 7-Eleven. I mean, you know, you're not gonna walk in try to pay and then wait there. And, and the merchant doesn't want you to go without knowing they got their money because it'd be way too easy with, you know, replace by fee for them to send it, you know, them to walk out and then to send those same funds elsewhere with a slightly higher fee and bam, the merchant just got screwed, even without worrying about uh, orphan blocks or 51% or whatnot. So having the, the features we do with the instant pay and having the easy smart card out there where you can go and you can actually pay with your smart card faster than one of the new chip and pin cards goes through is vitally important for an actual in-person point of sale experience.
Yeah, the the one thing that I've noticed whenever I try and approach people to essentially start accepting smart cash is the first thing that they're like is, I need to be able to spend it. I need to be able to use it in my own life. And like at the end of the day, that's what currency is about. What's the point if <laughs> you have to jump through all sorts of hoops? <laughs> exactly. That's time. why. Yeah. And, and that's why we're trying to go for full ecosystem. I mean, what we're continuing to expand in Brazil is giving people more and more ways to use it easily, you know, so that, uh, you know, right now adventurous businesses could pay their employees in smart cash and their employees can use that smart cash anywhere, just like they could the real. So yeah, I think Brazil is a great snapshot for what it could look like worldwide. Cause it mm -hmm. does seem fairly convenient just based off of the research I've done. It's made Brazil seem fairly appealing because you can spend your crypto there. You can spend your smart there. You can't necessarily do that. I have to exchange it to pesos here right now. So <laughs> Yeah, and so that's the goal is to create this this full ecosystem so currency can flow from more than just you to the merchant, but then can flow from the merchant to the supplier, from the merchant to their employees, to their landlord, whoever. So the merchant can keep the flow going so the smart cash itself never actually has to convert out to fiat or does so at a much later stage. So people are just using it back and forth more and more. And that's how we get adoption and usage. And that's why, you know, we, we like having the transactions on our blockchain. That's why we like having the actual usage that we do in Brazil. And we're thrilled by that continued growth and adoption there. Yeah, it is extremely exciting. Makes me want to visit there. And it's more than just about the meat now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, absolutely. I would, uh, <laughs> yeah, next time I fly to South America, I'm going to have to take my family down there with me because um, it'll be really exciting. It's great to be able to use smart cash wherever I go. And that's, that's what I want to have happen here. But here in the U.S., our, our laws are restrictive and it makes businesses be overly cautious. So it just it takes more effort to get smart cash accepted and used in the States. But have, you, have you been to Brazil yet? Not yet. I really do want to go down there, but um, since I started with Smart Cash, my wife's been pregnant, or I've had a you know, mm -hmm. my my daughter's now eight months old. That we found out um, we were going to have when I quit my job, start working for Smart Cash full time, and it's not the easiest thing to fly across the world with a seven month old. <laughs> no, that sounds actually like a giant pain in the ass. But yeah, that that's the thing nightmares are made out of. <laughs> but as, we, as my kids get older and we can take these family trips, it'll be very, very exciting to go down there and expose them to, you know, Brazil, because Brazil's a beautiful place, but also just to be able to expose them to how adoption of crypto really looks. So they know that this isn't just dad's magic internet money that they're asking to go to the moon. Yeah, it's, it's one thing when... And they're just seeing you, you know, talking about it a bunch. It's another thing when you see it put in use. That's the thing that got me excited about Bitcoin because it took like John telling me about it for six months and I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. And then he bought some and then he was using it. And it was it's like, that's when I started to pay attention. Back in the days when you could buy like alpaca socks and pizza and stuff off bitcoinstore.com. <laughs> the, 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 the socks, I think, were the first real online store to accept Bitcoin. Yeah, and then there were chocolates at one point that like mm -hmm. came soon after that. Yeah, those were the early, early days. <laughs> yep, and that's um, what we're going for with Smart Cash is just expanding to be able to use everywhere and anywhere. So we're very excited as more and more merchants accept it. So um, I don't think there was really anything else big from the event. It was, as I said, exciting to talk to my panel and just have enough people ask about Smart Cash that we just kept things going. Um, our old friend Ben Swan was there and mentioned Smart Cash several times. So that was always, always nice. And then a few of our favorite internet uh, crypto Twitter personalities were there too. So it's uh, it, it was a fun little event to go to, and it was great to talk to these people and expose them to Smart Cash and expose them to what crypto adoption really could be. Yep, sounds like it would have been fun. It was. Seems like almost a fork of consensus. <laughs> <laughs> well, the you know it, consensus itself has you know been around forever, and they do their their thing relatively well and whatnot. But it's you know for me, 
too much big money's there. It gets very, uh, I don't know how to put it, stifled, stingy of people just wanting to deal with all the big money all the time and, you know, making sure all your I's are dotted and T's are crossed when it comes to SEC regulation and so on and so forth. And it gets stifling. It's not as exciting as just the pure crypto keep things moving as, but you know, they're important people too. They'll definitely get into the space. And when I went to the consensus event in the fall last year, you know, talked to some good people there and kept things going, but it was fun to go to this one and talk to people who really cared about the tech and the adoption and keeping things moving forward. Yeah, at the end of the day, that's what crypto is all about. The big money doesn't happen if there's no features to keep people using it. Like, <laughs> exactly, because you know, without without actual usage as a medium of exchange, nothing else matters. Indeed. <laughs> well, I think that covered everything. Unless you had one other burning question or anything. No, not that I can think of. I asked them all. <laughs> including the takeover question. (laughs) (laughs) That's the important one. So uh, I guess we'll go out from here and uh, check out. Thanks for listening to uh, Smart Talk Radio with Chris and Lily today. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.